Hey, I'm Will, and today I'd like to do a quick update on the Superbase C Sharp library. And so just kind of some of the latest news, what's going on, some of the updates, and then talk a little about some of the client options for things like using it with Unity or Godot or some of the other frameworks. So first up, just real quick, I wanted to cover some of the updates to the C Sharp client library. So basically, this is a set of code that makes it easier to use C Sharp with Superbase. So what we've got here is uh, the GitHub repo showing the, um, the repository and all the sub components to it. Um, we can see that we've got support for several different components, real-time, Postgres, which I use a lot, which lets you generate a REST API directly from functions, authentication, which is the OAuth email password and native sign-in stuff, storage, edge, all this fun stuff. Out of the box, uh, there's NuGet packages that are supplied. So if you're using a platform that works well with NuGet, you can just go ahead and grab that, add it to your project just like normal, and you're off to the races. Now, in terms of some of the updates and new things that are available, um, we've done a whole bunch of work on updating the documentation. Um, now I say we because I'm now a contributor. Yay! So. Um, go ahead and check some of this stuff out. We've got notes in here for things like how to use it with Unity or C Sharp, um, I'm sorry, uh, with Xamarin, Maui, server-side apps, all that fun stuff, including information on how you set up the client differently for different contexts. For example, on a rich client like Unity or Maui or Avalon or something like that, uh, you'd want to go ahead and set it up with things like background threads and session storage to the disk and things like that. But if you're doing a server application that's stateless, you'd want to do a different configuration. So we've got information and documentation updated on how to approach doing that. We've also got a nice discussion forum set up as well. So you can just go through the standard Git uh, discussion forum. And if you've got questions or things on getting stuff set up or you're using a platform that um, you're not sure how to get working, you can go ahead and go to the discussion forum and see if you can get help. Um, so from a high level, some of the other things that are kind of neat um, over uh, the last few months are um, things like offline support for auth. So an earlier version, if the network wasn't available, it would just log you out. Now it's got proper support and there's also an interface to add in your own online or offline um, navigation capabilities depending on your platform or stack because some of the different tooling has different ways of detecting network stats. So that's the high level, some of the stuff that's new in the C Sharp project. Um, what I wanted to do now is also show off something else, which is we've got a, a template now for Unity. So this was built about a month ago. So um, since I, uh, that template was built, there's been a lot of churn in the market around Unity and what's going on with that package. And so this is sort of a weird time to be making this video because that template was made and posted to C Sharp before some of the stuff around Unity and its licensing changes. So with that sort of caveat in mind, um, I'd like to just go ahead and Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead. This is the template. It's up on GitHub right now. And the idea behind a GitHub template is that you can actually just go here and um, clone it off and make it your own project without having to do anything fancy. So if I just go ahead and hit um, open with GitHub desktop, you'll get a local copy. I assume if you're familiar with Git, this is all pretty standard stuff. But anyway, so this is the project running. And what I thought I'd do now is just go ahead and quickly show you how you can get started working with this. So out of the box, uh, once you open up the template, this is the Unity project that you'll see for the template. And then you can actually go into the um, into the project itself. Uh, this is my terminal running right here. And uh, if you have Docker installed, so I'm going to show you Docker really quick, installed and running on my machine. Um, what you do is you go to the Docker site, download and install Docker. I'm running on Mac OS, and you can see I've got Docker running uh, up here. Um, I can bring up the dashboard. You can see dashboard, yay, for Docker. So all you have to do is just go to Docker, download and install it. You don't have to do any configuration really for that. Then you also need to install the Superbase command line, which um, there's instructions on how to do that up on the Superbase site. So then what I've done is inside this project, I've run two commands. I already ran Superbase and it, and all that does is create the starting config files. And then I can go ahead and hit Superbase start. 
So what this will do is the first time you do it, it'll pull down um, the Docker images for a local Superbase configuration, um, which is what we're seeing right now. I'm going to go ahead and there we go. Okay, so now we've got uh, the Superbase local dev setup going. And let's go ahead and hit the local um, studio URL. So this is the one that we want to actually see. Here's our local project running. And I can actually go in here and see things like, I have no users set up in this project. So this is a Superbase instance running locally on my machine. Okay. So when I go back to the Superbase template project, what we can see here is I've got a few extra classes that I've added for things like um, setting up a listener, um, setting up my configuration, and I've got local development server settings here. So this is just localhost and the localhost uh, anon key, which I've copied and pasted from here. So when you download the template, by default, you'll get um, this set of URLs and keys, which is the same one that you get if you just do a Superbase start. So out of the box, you should be able to just go ahead and fire it up, so fire up the Superbase server locally, and then hit play, and then it'll work. So now it's saying I have nobody logged in. Let's go ahead and create a new user. So in this case, I'll just do demo at example.com and create a test password. And if I hit sign up, I can see I've logged in. And now if I go back to my project here and hit reload, I can actually see the user has now been logged in onto my local dev server. That's all you need to get auth set up and working um, for a local instance. Now, let's say I want to go ahead and talk to a project I have running up on Superbase. All I have to do for that is go over here, go ahead and create a new Superbase settings file, and then paste in the URL and the anonymous public key uh, right in here, and then drop that into this Superbase manager script. So that's all I have to do to get this up and working. Um, and you should be able to just do the exact same thing, sign up, log in, log out, all that fun stuff. Um, if I go ahead and quit running the project and then hit run again, by default, it's going to go ahead and log me back in because it saved the session locally. So you can see that um, I've gotten everything logged in. You'll note that I have the little cube spinning. And part of the reason I do that is just to illustrate that all of the um, underlying code and functions are actually done with async await. Oh, Let's go and touch really briefly on some of the configuration for this project in case that you're trying to understand how it's going and how it's set up. So what I've got here is I've got the code for the project, the demo project. This has got the managers, um, a session listener for whether or not you're logged in or not. Um, and as the that updates, um, a simple script for signing in with your email and your password. Um, the manager, of course, is the thing that's where we do the initialization and setup. This is just the um, a uh, scriptable object holding the settings. And here is a simple implementation that uses the file system to store the cache of the user's um, uh, JWT that they get back from Superbase for logins. So that's what that is. Um, the other thing I'll highlight right here is inside of this folder here, these are all the libraries that are being pulled in to get Superbase working. And so the way these are actually brought in is through a NuGet command line. And what I do is I run the command line. It grabs all the libraries with the versions that I specify and then drops them into my project. Um, so you can get the information on that command line and all that in the documentation on the Superbase C-Sharp setup project. The, um, what you'll do when you run that command is by default, it's going to pull in the net standard two libraries. Um, and unfortunately what happens is, is it will pull in too many libraries, including a lot of system libraries that unity actually supplies. And so what happens is that may work when you're running in the editor, but when you go to build, especially with IL2CPP on iOS, you'll get build conflicts. So what you'll want to do is strip those libraries back down to just the ones that you need to get things up and running. So just to illustrate really quick that the iOS build stuff is working, I've set this project to um, run in iOS. Here's a folder that I was using before, but I'm just going to go ahead and replace that folder. And now it does the build pretty quickly. So then what I'm going to want to do is go in 
Uh, let's try that one more time. There we go. So now it did the build, and I can go ahead and open up the project in Xcode. Um, the one thing that you'll want to do to get the Xcode build running is, well, two things. One, you'll want to go in and turn on automatic signing and make sure that you're selected yourself as the user. And then the other one that's kind of neat is um, you can use the default Unity build for iOS to target um, just any ARM64, but then it won't actually run locally. Um, and unfortunately, you can't target the simulator. But what you can do is target your Mac if you're running on an M1 or M2 or Apple Silicon device. So sure enough, I can hit that and run. It'll go ahead and do the build. And then um, it'll actually launch the app as an app targeting your Mac. Um, you do one, I would recommend going ahead and flipping off Bitcode um, as well, if you've got the time and you care about being clear about that. But here you go. Now I've got the project running as a local build. And I can go ahead and do a test user to at sign up here and sure and then I can go back into my dashboard and refresh and see I've got my second user set up here so there you go so real quick um, in terms of going forward um, I'm probably going to be spending more of my time over the next few weeks or months uh, focusing more on Godot um, so one of the things on my short list is to try um, and double check to see what's um, which libraries I should pull in to get them configured for Godot. Uh, my understanding is that Godot C Sharp, um, right now the one limitation is, is that as of this writing, the Godot C Sharp functionality works great on desktop, but it doesn't have support for mobile and web versions. But that's apparently coming very soon, so I'm looking forward to that. Oh, the other thing is, is that the Godot version of .NET appears to be a more recent version of .NET than the one that's inside of Unity, and it doesn't have the same some of the some of the same conflicts potentially. So I'm really curious to see how um, the NuGet configuration, if there's a better and easier way to get NuGet to play with the rest of what's going on in sort of in the core runtime. Anyway, I uh, just wanted to give this as a quick update. Hope this is fun and interesting. If you're a C Sharp developer, especially if you're working on other platforms like Maui or Xamarin stuff or uh, Avalon UI or whatever cool, weird frameworks and tools that you're using, um, do come back and check it out. Come to the um, discussion board. Same thing if you're a Godot person and you're looking at getting started with that. Um, anyway, thanks for your time. Uh, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, bye, guys.